Hey guys, how are we doing? This is Professor Wiggins here. Today we're going to be talking about the galactic center and the monster that's lurking there. So today you can see that I've worn my um, black blazer. That's because there's a black hole actually in this little video and um, I guess I was trying to be uh, festive? That's not the right word, but I think you know what I mean. So um, if you were to take a telescope and focus it in the direction of a constellation called Sagittarius, that happens to be in the direction of the galactic center, um, and you were to track the motions of stars there for a really long period of time, say like 10 years or so, you could, by taking lots and lots of pictures over that time, kind of create a movie that shows you what the motions of stars actually is like. And that's what some scientists actually did. They, over time, took pictures of a bunch of stars, and um, this is what they came up with. You can see that stars are orbiting around something kind of in the middle of the galaxy. And if you use Johannes Kepler's laws of motion, you actually come to find out that the object that they're orbiting right in the center of the frame weighs something like four million suns and it doesn't shine. You're actually looking into the lair of a supermassive black hole. So remember what a black hole is. A black hole is an object which doesn't shine because if light gets too close, light itself will actually get sucked in. So it's really cool to think that inside the frame of this picture is one of these legendary astronomical creatures, a real live supermassive black hole. The reason we call it a supermassive black hole is because it's millions of times the mass of the sun. So what we're gonna discover is in later chapters, there's going to be black holes that are billions of times the mass of the sun and so on. But all of those supermassive black holes, we kind of lump into one big group. So, so this group is distinct from what we would call stellar black holes. So those are black holes that come from when a big star dies and its core collapses and becomes a black hole. Those black holes are on order of one solar mass. They weigh about one sun. And by the way, they're not even made the same way, these two types of black holes. So we think that one set of black holes comes from stars, and the other set of black holes we're not quite sure about. We still are kind of researching that. But we believe they were born sometime in the early universe, and probably were born at the same time that galaxies themselves would have been born. So we call the black hole at the center of the galaxy Sagittarius A star. And notice it looks like an asterisk at the end. It is, in fact, pronounced a star. For a while, the galactic center was actually obscured from our view, so visible light gets trapped behind walls of dust that obscure the galactic center. It wasn't until people began doing astronomy with other wavelengths, infrared and radio, that they began to realize there was something really cool happening in the center of the galaxy. This is a picture of radio emission coming from the very center of the galaxy, and the brightest spot that you see is coming from the location of the supermassive black hole. Wait a second. We just got done saying that black holes don't emit any light. So why on earth is it the case that in all of these pictures, the center of the galaxy is the brightest object? Why is this black hole the brightest thing in the image? The answer has to do with what happens when a black hole eats. So if you have a black hole here and material is falling into the black hole, sometimes it'll go straight in, but many times the material has a velocity of its own. It was headed somewhere and then the black hole decided to eat it. And so here comes the material. What happens is the gravity of the black hole whips it around and an accretion disk forms around the, the black hole. So you probably have seen art of accretion disks. This is kind of what they're conceptualized to look like. They're very bright. It's not the black hole itself that's shining. It's this really bright accretion disk. When material is about to be eaten by the black hole, it turns into this shredded glowing plasma right before it plunges inward, and that's what glows. So you can see evidence of this disk in, say, the X-ray and in the radio. And in all of these cases, what you're looking at is actually the accretion disk. And a lot of this light from the accretion disk is blocked, but we can see it in the X-rays and we can see it in the radio. Both are types of wavelengths that make it past this dust. What are the other bright spots? Well, a lot of it is star formation, which is taking place extraordinarily close to the black hole. This is a bit of a mystery. 
they're really close to the black hole, and black holes tend to rip stars apart that get too close. Um, they tend to frustrate star formation that way. And so why we're getting um, a bunch of star formation in the middle of the galaxy is kind of a, a ongoing mystery. The thought is that maybe the stars, or the gas at least, was from elsewhere, and it kind of migrated closer to the black hole. A couple of evidences that you can see, by the way, from of these brand new stars is supernova remnants. So if you notice, you'll see that there's these bubble-like structures in the clouds um, around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And these are supernova remnants. When a star blows up and goes supernova, it creates these bubble-like shock waves that come out. And stars that are really big that create supernova explosions don't tend to live very long. Only a few million years, which is pretty short for a star's lifetime, which means that star formation has taken place relatively recently in kind of the environs of the galactic center. Again, kind of a standing mystery. So how do we know for sure that there really is a black hole in the center of the galaxy? If we can show that there's a gigantic amount of mass and we can show that all that mass is contained in a very small space, then we can immediately say it's a black hole because it would have collapsed to form a black hole anyway. So the way that they determine the size, by the way, of the black hole is using this really cool technique called radio interferometry. Basically, you take telescopes from all around the world and they all point at one object in the sky. And because it's all the radio telescopes focusing on one point, you get this unprecedented resolution. And they find that the entire emitting region of Sagittarius A star is actually um, smaller than the distance between Mercury and the Sun. And that, for 4.3 to 4.6 million suns, is enough to collapse and form a black hole. Remember that we're saying that this emission is coming from an accretion disk, so what we're actually saying is that the accretion disk around the black hole is smaller than the distance between Mercury and the Sun. So how do we know that there's a black hole at the center of the galaxy? The first hints of it came from really bright x-rays that were coming from the center of the galaxy and really bright radio waves, um, both of which made it past the veils of dark dust that kind of obscured our view of the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Next, when we actually track the motions of stars in the very center of the Milky Way galaxy, and just using Kepler's laws, you can back out what the mass of that central object is, and it weighs something like four million suns. And then radio measurements actually allow you to constrain how big that object is. So with all of those telescopes around the world working together, taking a very high resolution picture, you can see that that teeny tiny object in the middle is no more than the distance between Mercury and the Sun. And all of those kind of facts together lead us to believe that there is this monster black hole that's hanging out in the middle of our galaxy, which is pretty cool.